Disclaimer. This video, like all videos featured on this channel, is definitely intended for mature audiences. This video is likely to contain profane language. Content is inappropriate for minors. Video is not for kids. Welcome to the Dr. Green Dumb Show. Not a Welcome to it, the Dr. Green Thumb Show, right here on Twitch, YouTube, Discord, and the home site, www.bereal.tv. Mm. Uh, welcome to it. To my right, Mr. Goodlight, DJ C Minus. What up? Happy Thursday. Word in the treehouse crew, Bolton Blombo, Bra Bra, and the Dominator. Yo, yo, what up, B? We're doing good today. All right. Where'd you get that jacket at, bro? Huh? Yeah, look at that jacket, yeah. Bolton. This isn't a jacket, it's a sweatshirt. But also put hashtag Be Real TV in your super chat to be entered to win a mystery box. Must be 18 and must live in the U.S. Grape Street, huh? Yeah, yeah, Grape Street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we also <laughs> Grape Street. We also have Demrick in the building. Hey, back again. You know what it is. And we have Mr. Milligrams. What's up, everybody? Good to be back. He's home. Happy Thursday. How you doing? How you doing? Feeling good. We have a great show coming up. Hey, I want to send uh, a salute to uh, my man Scoop Deville. Who has done an excellent job on uh, pr the production of the new Serial Killers album? Man. He's producing it. Yes, it's well, hard. Yes, it, uh, killing it too. It is hard. We, we were li listening to it a couple weeks back, and uh, we had a little listening session of the first five songs that he mixed. You got to have a tattoo to get this at mixtape too, or what? Yep. Yeah. Come on, be real, man. I have a serial killer tattoo to like, you know. Get this. <laughs> bro, I have like two albums he comes here and talks about. I'm like, hey, bro, been talking about it for months. Can I get some of it? Like, no, nah, you got to get a tattoo, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> get a, a tattoo. Tattoo. They say in uh, Australia, New Zealand, a tattoo. Uh, yeah, man, we were listening to, to five joints the, that he had uh, done an initial mix on. You know, for us to take notes on, you know, you know some time back and pff, banging. Nice. Crazy. Excited yes. for this. Everybody's snapping their bars off. Um, Ooh, and, yeah. and Scoob got heat. Man, it feels like he gave us a sound. That's what we we're talking about. We're kind of listening to it. It's like it's it's got its it's got a unique, uh, special thing about it. You know what I what I wish came back in like music? Like with like the, uh, the albums, I wish people like you were like kind of like the king of music videos at one point. You know what I mean? Like just constantly making. But I feel like the visuals don't get as much love as the actual record. And sometimes instead of like maybe making a regular video to music of yours in the background, how about you just cut up your video into reels and just like shoot it out like that? You know? Because sometimes I feel like when you have a badass like visual to the music, sometimes the visual might get you over the music. Yeah. And I feel like the music these days kind of like I don't not that it doesn't have that this stuff, but like especially with like such a like combination that you guys have, I hope you guys make a lot of videos for this. Yeah, yeah we ha I think that's that's the key, you know, making a visual for everything because it's yeah. a powerhouse for this album. So yes, don't worry for the group in specific. <laughs> so I, I like I, there's you know I'm pretty sure uh, Exhibit has like a, a fleet of like army trucks. So. Probably by <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put it past. Yeah, scoop, man. I can't like that to to hear his sound, and then with all three of you guys, you know what I mean. Uh, man, I can't wait. It's gonna be dope. Exciting. Yeah, man. It's exciting. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. The fifth one. You know, we did this. We've been five doing albums. This, Number five. five. It's been too long, though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, and we're looking towards putting it out in in, in October. You know, ha- Halloween proper, because we've I think we've put one out. One of the other... We, I, I believe we put every one out on every one out in uh, in October, yeah? yeah, Halloween, right? Yeah, right around there. Yeah, wow. which is I think it's great. Makes sense. Uh, it makes sense to me, man. Yeah, gotta say, got we got a chance to hear uh, a, a few of the exhibits, new joints while we were uh, back there banging. Nice. I gotta tell you, there was one. I mean, all of them were dope. That he played us. He played us a few of them, but there was one on there that was just like smack. Yeah, we've been at uh, the shows that I've been rocking with him. Uh, the ones we just did in Canada with um, with him and Cube. <clears throat> we did two of the new songs, two unreleased new jams. That were, he's performing them live, and they both go over crazy, and they're not even out yet. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And that one particular, the one that you were talking about, it's... Rocket to the West, Rocket to the East, yes. and shit go crazy. Whole crowd acting. I'm like, I'm like, I can't wait. I'm excited for X to be putting out a new album. It sounds crazy. Yeah, man, I can't wait to hear that shit. You got a verse on there? I do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Interesting. I know he hit me up some time ago, and I locked in with it. Did you RSO it last night? No, I didn't. I was high though. That's for sure. Why well, you think I'm on RSO right no, now? No, not on RSO, but like the you know the the coming back of like an RSO episode maybe. Oh no 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 no! That was like a, that was like last week. Oh right. <laughs> when you took the vitamins, I took took my vitamins and took an RSO <laughs> pill by accident. <laughs> Did it wake you up? Did it wake me up? No. You no. just, did you wake up and you're like, I oh. wake up and I thought I was cool. I was like, oh, hell yeah. I got a good sleep. I didn't go through none of the craziness. Went to use the restroom and then I went to feed the dog. And I was, as I was going down to get the dog's bowl, boom, the heat just turned on on me. <laughs> oh, man, that's, that's the word. <laughs> you, know, though, you know what, though, Ezo? Now, lucky because I was in the garage and my garage is like the coldest part of my place, man. I mean, it was cold. It was a probably like... 54 degrees in there right and uh so when i started getting hot i just stood in the garage and i was like oh my god i'm feeling this right now how's there how's there a delay (laughs) right and i'm looking at my weight bench right there and i'm like i I just want to go lay down on my weight (laughs) bench and (laughs) and i just i just wrote it out for a few minutes Till I felt my body cool off again, and then I went to my room. I laid down for another hour, and poof, that was it. And when I woke up, I was fine. But it was like that moment, like it caught me. It's like, oh, you thought you wasn't going to feel it. <laughs> I had, I had one of those, man. But it's starting to heat up. Uh, not heat up, but it's starting to get like normal California weather. Uh, like you know, the sun's out, so you might sweat if you're like stand the sun a little bit too long. So you know, it's not as cold this night sometimes. And like yesterday, I forgot that I was I because sometimes I'm like one of those individuals where if I I'll I'll make a bunch of RSO pills or SHO pills and I'll have a jar, and then sometimes I'll be I, I'll attempt to take one. I'll just leave it in a drawer or I'll leave it something. And yesterday, I'm organizing so much stuff. I've been organizing a lot of stuff. And I just see one, and I think it's an old baby one. So I was like, oh, I can't let this go to waste. I just take it and just keep going around my day. Yeah. And as I try going to sleep, bro, I, I did have the the hotness, bro. Like, just the hotness. You, you, I, I'm like, why do I have three blankets on me? This is very annoying. And you're just you're like, yeah. yeah, I couldn't go to sleep. But I just went to open the fridge. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, it, right that there. Or the free, ice. Yeah. yeah or, the, uh, or the freezer. Oof, yeah. To open both. Just, yeah. Yeah. Just, like, let that. If I would have real, if, 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 see, like, I got a little freezer in my, in my, um, in my garage and had had the coolness of the garage not worked i was going to the freezer and just open it up and stick my head in there for like five minutes wow. just be like cool off is that the cheat code that's yeah when your body heats up because i mean when when you take the rso or the sho and let's just say you go to sleep and you didn't feel that blast it happens when you're awake because it happens when you're awake most times but like you're asleep so it might get through it might come through slowly <laughs> and it might hit you when you wake up Hello? and it's a blast like your your body temp goes up you know what i mean it's like yeah it seems like your blood pressure is rising or whatever you know what i mean dealing with 
the high that's happening. Have you ever that, taken your blood pressure during that time? I'm kind no. of scared now that you mentioned that. I no. was like, what I think if that's it, what's happening? I think, it's, it, I think <laughs> it goes up for sure, but then it comes back down. It's because our body's adapting to, you know, what we're dealing with at the, in the moment. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, wow. it's not something you, like... This isn't like, you know, you put an extra couple of grams on your, your joint or blunt. Like, don't, no. don't look at it. Don't look at it like that. No. If you're thinking about trying it. Like, it's just it, like even like people like that have pushed the limits like myself and B like to just like there's times where I get humbled as well. Like, you know, like the, like on the way back from Japan at the last pill, dude, I, I thought I was going to they were going to like put me down the no flight list because I had I, I was sweating, bro. And I was, everybody else is normal as hell. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm, I'm having like hot flashes and, you know, like I, I'm just like, man, dude, I don't want to start fanning like this because it's cold. You know what I mean? But I'm still sweating and then they're going to be like, what's wrong with this guy? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, well, yeah. You're heating up, boy. It's like yeah. you're in a sauna. <laughs> At that time, were you on the flight? Or you were you? Yeah, I was so I, on to the flight. So I we I, both had an experience yeah. on the flight. So like I took some on the like I took some on the way there, while I was there, and on the way back, I specifically reserved one from the way there and the way back. And on the the one that I took on the takeoff from here to there, I was already feeling it before I I went on the plane. So I was cool. I was already handling everything. It was already in full effect, maybe halfway effect, because I took it early. But the one that I took over there on the way back, I took it like maybe like an hour away before the airport. So it takes a while as it, as it affects. I was we we're kicking it a while at the airport, and as it was starting to hit, that's when takeoff like actually went up. So the elevation as the high kept going <laughs> up, it pushed it to the extreme, kind of like what happened when I got high in Colorado and I oh, ended up yeah. passing out. Yeah, yeah. So. I was having one like an episode, bro, because like as the high was starting to develop, I was it was getting more extreme because we're going up so high. Yeah, the <laughs> elevation, yeah. everything happened and just sitting yeah. that point. Yeah. For me, what really got me when I was like full blown, when I was like in the clutches of it, is when the plane was banking to the left or banking to the right, bro. Anytime I felt that, I was like, oh my god! Like if I felt like when you get drunk and you get the spins. Yeah, that's the worst. Yeah. I, when I was closing my eyes, it was happening. So I had to keep keep my eyes open and yeah. focus on something else. You know what I mean? I couldn't even close my eyes and try to sleep it off. It was just, oh my god. I have a stands. Oof. But once I got over it, once that was over, and I was, <laughs> and the spins went away, and like I was able to actually close my eyes and go to sleep. I had a great sleep. It was just that initial first 30, 40 minutes. Mm. Oh. Oof. Yeah, no. I was like, I will never do that shit again. <laughs> or never take one that Bobo gives me. Because that's not the first time I did that. Like, Trace gave me one on a flight, you know, like maybe six months before that. Didn't have any of that experience. Popped it right before we got on the plane. Sitting on the plane. It hits. I go to sleep. Nothing. Fine. Great. But that one that I got from Bobo, <laughs> not the same experience. <laughs> not the same at uh, all. Yeah. It was horrible that first 40 minutes, bro. Uh, no, thank you. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, the, that one I took from, the first one I took from Cali Blaze, and I, I took it like at 7.30 in the evening. I forgot about it. I had to go meet. The homie Jay over at one of his gigs, and <laughs> everything was fine. And that you know, that first half hour of just getting my like getting my sh my shit together, getting your shizzle, and like it was just like I felt it go whoa 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 as I'm walking up. It just started to hit as I'm walking upstairs. I was like, but of course. And Have then, you ever taken a Demerick? No. Oh no. Bring it. <clears throat> Nah, you don't want none of that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want none of that. As a friend, you don't want to try this. As a friend, I'm telling you, you yeah. don't want none of that. <laughs> if I knew that you you partied the way we do with the weed and shit like that, then I'd say, dude, yeah, you need to try it. Bring it. But I know you don't. Yes. So mm -hmm. I'm saying, like, if someone ever tries to give you a gel cap, do not. If you do. You got to start off real small amounts yeah, so that, like, you don't get blasted out like we just said. Like one you probably get at the shop. 
Yeah. Yeah. One you would get at the shop, those would be safe for you because those are 10 milligrams. Yeah. 10, five, 10 milligrams for beginners. Yeah. Like yeah. what we're talking about is doing some shit that like, you know, See, you're filling up your own <laughs> pill, bro. Yeah. Like, that's how crazy it is. Yeah. yeah you're yeah. filling up your own gel cap and you're putting probably two, three times the amount that they would give a person to actually <laughs> take. And we're just like riding wild. The whole syringe oh, yeah. in one pill. <laughs> so yeah. don't take any from us, Demrick. If you're going to try it, you get it from the dispensary. All right. Yeah. Let me just give you that advice. I'll take Bobo it. gives I'll take you one. Walk Do away. not. Yeah. Walk. Stronger than he says. Walk. <laughs> Believe that. It's stronger than what he says it is. Walk on by. For sure it is. Walk on by. Walk. Yeah. I hit that. Hit that harmony. Yeah. Well, no, I didn't hit it. It wasn't a harmony. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm still remember when we hit that. Uh, what was it, though? Was it? That? I'm still trying to figure out. Look, Demrick, when Cheech was here, right? Um. At the end of the show, you know, we take a picture with, with the guest, whatever, right? And uh, he had to go to the restroom first. And as he was coming back, I was mentioning something about the intruders because I said the intruders' name at Cali Vibes, and, and really it was the interrupters. Yeah. Mm. But I said the intruders, and somehow C- minus pops off with the song that me and Bobo knew as well. So we start singing the line with him, and then we get to this one harmony part, and boom, we hit it just like, was and, it and, and we actually it was hit it. Cheech walked right in, was like, "Oh shit, you guys are gonna sing me do up?" I didn't know you guys. Sang. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we're like, "Wow, that was lucky." We, yeah, <laughs> nice. that was luck. Yeah, to even hit that. Was it that you're still a young man? Was that no? I think it was. Whether you're still a young man, baby. Ooh. Yeah, we all hit yeah. that shit at the same time. I yeah, know, like, of us. None of us just knew where what part we were taking. We just took it naturally and it worked. Yeah, nice. we were. Yeah. I don't think we could nice. recreate it like no. we really tried to. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. funny you chose that song as Cheech was walking in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, turns out I don't even think that's a. A, an intruder song. I think it's a probably, Del, I think it's a Dell song. That you're you probably are correct. Yeah. But because the intruders is in that time. Yes. Y'all went into that mode. We went yeah. into the doo wop mode. Nice. And, uh, you know. A Cheech Cheech he, he giggled at that shit because he was like, <laughs> Oh shit, you guys are singing doo wop over here for me. Like, yeah. Are you oh, ever gonna shiny. bring that rock band with Steftone back? What, Kush? Yeah. I would like to. I mean, it would be dope because I mean, I mean you know, do a new version of it now, like up, updated, upgraded, unfaded, and more educated. Bring it. Because before, look, I'll tell you why I would do it now, and it would probably be a lot better now, is that I know the difference between writing for, for the 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 hip hop shit that's like the the, the hybrid fusion, right? And how it's actually supposed to be. When I, was, I started doing this, you know, the shit with me, Muggs, and Sen doing the rock shit, we took it as we're going we're gonna to write the verses like we write the hip-hop verses. Long-ass 16-bar verses. And I think rock superstars, like 20-some-odd fucking bars. Oh, uh, yeah, killed it. And really, when you hear some of these songs, they're very short verses. You know what I mean? And getting to the, the chorus and, and all that shit a lot faster. Right, so I would write shorter, more more impactful verses than like the normal sixteen and twenty some odd shit. You know, there's that, bars yeah. in rock music. Yeah, there's bars in all music. All music, like it's like sixteen. Like we call we call our verses that we drop that are really hot bars, but really a bar is a count. Yeah. It's going one, two, three, four. four. That's one. So it's one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, three two, two, three, four. four. Four, two, three, four. So that, that's four bars. Yeah. That's the, so that's the meaning of bars. So uh bars exist in any form of music. Bars and measures. You know what I mean? And that that's how you count the beats. You know what I mean? So when we say bars, we're si- slightly using it out of what it's really meant, you know, to say, Oh man, my man got bars. Yeah. Um, that means he's got rhymes. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. But realistically, because, yes, oh, we all got bars. But it's it's a count. It's, yeah, no, it's like music-wise, the way you broke it down, it makes Yeah, so like yeah. a rock song, 
Yeah, they they count bars uh classical. Yeah, classical jazz. bars and measures. Bars and measures, yeah. Measures is where it's like if you do something that's like a four four, which is like one two, which is like just one bar. But if you did a five four, it would be one two three four five one two. two. Then you use three four five one. Two. Yeah, there's so, all kinds of different counts. Yeah, so it, it's cool, man. And it's if someone would have told me in school that like music had a lot to do with math, I probably would have studied harder. I would have paid attention. I would have ta- paid more attention to math too. Absolutely, 100%. right? 100%. If, like if they would have made, like, because it really is all math to understand all like bars yeah. and like time time measures and stuff. So it's or like, like, or like if they would have told me that like I would have needed science to understand how drugs work, 100% I would have paid attention. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. That yeah, part. Like I would have just been like, all right, bro, like understanding <laughs> the beginning, the consumption, and the safety. And the yeah. whoopty wop. Yeah. yeah. I mean, safety first. I mean, they're not going to teach you how to sell it. Obviously, you're going to find that out at some point, but I'm not telling you, but it's just like, hey, bro, if you would have broken it down, it'd be like, you need science for this. Hell yeah. I avoided math like it was just like nothing I wanted. Me too. I wanted nothing to do with it, you know? Dude, 11th and 12th grade, I cheated, bro, all year. I know. I had a, <laughs> I had a job. I had a I had a job at like uh at, at the the printer in the in like in the book room office. Yeah. So like I had to handle all the teachers' paperwork, right? And uh <clears throat> like they they would turn in their their like answer keys and all that stuff, dude. I would always make an extra copy for all that, dude. Straight mm. up, bro. It's like, always had extra copies to everything. You have to take that CSUN diploma and this was, rip this it was down the school. middle. <laughs> the, for review. This was high school. Kid. Yeah, but based off of what you said, you shouldn't <laughs> even made it to CSUN. I made it. I graduated hey. from CSUN, though, so I learned something there. But I, but I, I will. How many you, papers did you cheat off of there? Nah, I, there was no cheating in college, bro. That shit was serious. Yeah. <laughs> like like I, like not that's I I tried to do everything I could, bro. Because I even I I wanted to get a marketing degree first, but then I was like, fuck, man. I I kept paying for the calculus class, and I was like, I just can't learn this shit, man. Like yeah. I, I took two years of it, right? And I was like, hey, bro, I'm just wasting time here. I'm getting all these classes done, so I had to just change direction bro but yeah it, i ended up realizing that cheating is not it was not beneficial because <laughs> shit really hit the fan when you when got, I got to, to that college point. Yeah. and then and then you know I, I didn't have the basics to understand all the calculus shit and all that stuff but i, I mean it was complicated bro like calculus is hard but yeah this it's they teach it to you young <laughs> younger now yeah I remember in biology my uh teacher mr hanley he was like cool cool af and uh, he used to say, all right, well, if, you know, for the class, you, you and your partner can take the test together because it's all it's going to show is what you both learned. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if you guys are learning as a group, that, and if, I'll see fundamentally where it is that you guys have the problem at. So <clears throat> you guys want to, you know, duo up. And then, like, you guys, you know, take the test together. Yeah, talk to each other during the test. You could have that one person to talk to because it's basically mm. going to show how you both learned. That's pretty good. I was like, oh, okay. And then that's an open math teacher. At yeah. Least, at least that kind of made it fun, though. Like, you know, that seems like a very fun idea. When I went to Macy, right? Um, it was, it's a, you got, it's an elementary <clears throat> school, right? They had this one math teacher, and he would like time you on the time, times tables. You had to recite them one to 12, and you had to get Whoa. them under, uh, I don't know, under three minutes or something like that. And if Whoa. you were if you were able to stand in front of the class and like rock the whole times tables in front of everybody in under three minutes, you got a gold star. What? So you made everybody compete like that. Yo. And man. <laughs> I was like, So oh you how you would say one plus one times one times one is one one through twelve, two through twelve, three through twelve, and the rest through twelve. You had to like recite it all within like three, four minutes. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Like, problem yeah. answer, problem answer, problem answer. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is, and, 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 and I didn't realize it then, right? I just thought, damn, that's a hell of a mountain we got to climb as kids. I, that's a lot. I, had to, I, yeah. had, I had to do it too. And uh, I did it, but like I didn't realize what it was till later. That, that was him. Pretty much getting us to memorize what these answers are. Oh. You're not figuring out shit because you figure that out first, right? It's yeah. like they give you the homework for the 
math questions, but then he tests you. Like, how good you really know it after I've given you all these tests. Okay, we're going to do a special test today. I need Joey, Timmy, Becky up front. We're going to time you on your times tables right now. Damn, the pressure. Ready? Go. And, you know, one at a time. They had to, like, go one through 12 oh, man. Bring it. and knock it down. Everybody in the class had to do this. You know, one day it might be these three students. The next day it might be another three students. But he's testing everybody to know that your parents didn't do your homework for you. And right. you know your goddamn times tables because at at the point of that you've had enough homework and you've done one through 12 in various different scenarios of of multiplication right you should be able to go up and just rock your turntables because you know them by now it's right. in your m memory you don't have to figure it out each time because you're supposed to know them right and he would test us every week like that damn I, yeah. I, I, and, and i think that was a part of my being able to you know like knowing the ability that i can that i could like learn something, store it, and then put it out there like rhymes. Yeah. It was just like learning how to memorize rhymes in that point. Yeah. You know what I mean? It Damn. was just through math, oddly enough. Wow. How crazy is that? Thank you, Mr. Van Pelt, for those crazy-ass lessons that made no sense to us as kids. But now... <laughs> now you get it. Now I get it, Mr. Van Pelt. Yeah, like there was this one teacher who was a bitch. She was mean, bro. Mrs. Bitch was that her name? Mrs. Nah, Biatch. Mrs. Osborne, bro. Uh, and like, but she taught keyboards. Yeah, she used to call me all the time about him. Cause she was, she used to, she used to she used to teach keyboard, bro. And um, like you know, like to learn how to type. But yeah. Like, you know, computers and stuff. And bro, that she 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 used to really be on your ass, bro. Like about looking to to type. Oh yeah. But because of that, bro, like I literally really have no problem typing till this day. I know all the letters in Excellent. the keyboard. That's cool. And I can, you know what I mean? Like that's it's a that's a very valuable skill to have whenever especially when you work a lot of com computers. Like I don't ever have to look and take my time to type some stuff. You know, I just end up just going around like I'm typing it as I'm thinking it and that's like a really good skill and ability to have. You know, shout out to I don't think she's alive anymore, but shout out to her. I remember uh I remember like the the computer class and all that shit, I, I was like, man, I'm never gonna use this shit. <laughs> That's what I thought. Like God I was like, I'm never gonna have to use this shit. I was completely wrong. <laughs> I was like, that was the one class I should have paid attention to uh, uh, more. Typing on, like, yeah, typing. yeah, typing and like just just computers in general. I was like, I'm I'm, I'm never gonna be on these things. I did pay attention in certain classes though. I had this Academy of Finance. You got divided into like three academies. There was Academy of Finance, Academy of Health, Academy of Technology. Ray's went to was in the Academy of Tech. That's the reason he's so hands on with all that AV. You no, know? <laughs> but but like I went into the Academy of Finance, mm -hmm. and bro, like I, I I'm thankful to this day because even though I didn't really get into the stock aspects of all this stuff, that's what really gave me that business mindset for all that shit that I really. Oh, right now. You know what I mean? So like. It, school is influential, bro. Like, you know, whether you go certain to the, parts, yeah, certain yeah. parts of it, if you really pay attention, like, yeah. you might not know why you're paying attention to that at that moment. Listen, but the reading, the writing, the math, all applicable in life somewhere, yes. right? So you need those three things. Yes. The history, they be bullshitting us. Yeah. Well, yeah. For sure. Like, but, they tell broken histories all over the fucking place. Yeah. And that, that's useless. Yeah. Um, but there are some things, and the physical education, like getting kids into activities so that they're like, you know, out not, there doing shit. Not obese. Right. Yeah. They want healthy, fit kids. So, you know, but some work their way around that. Yeah, which is crazy because I remember going to school, like, in ROTC. all grades, everyone had to do PE. I took ROTC. I did too. I was almost going to go to the Army, dude. Because of that class, I was just like, man, I was like, what? ROTC <laughs> got me into my first job at the mall. Like, they <laughs> put me into, like, placements to, get, like, make money. Like, while I was on school time, too, it was rad. Damn. Yeah. That's, yeah, they, they, they hook you up, bro. There was a lot of things come to it. But they made you work out there, too. I was yeah. like, yeah. like, And the worst part was, is like, you had to work out military style. <laughs> it wasn't like... 
like you know like PE where you're just like running and uh, like as a group whenever you want like now i have to freaking like do like boot camp style work it's only once a week but you know hey it was cool like, it was, i had a good experience there you know one of the coolest things i ever learned from math was that every uh you know the nines thing yeah like every uh up from one to ten every multiplication problem is equals nine so like one nine times one nine right nine times two eighteen one plus eight nine times three twenty seven damn i didn't okay. got you Damn, I did not think about it that way. That's cool. So that was one of the cool, and I learned that in second grade. You know the way they te- they have a different way of teaching. <laughs> yeah, they have now, a new bro. way of teaching. The it new now. way is, and then I looked at some of these videos on like uh, on the Explore page, and I'm just like, man, if I would have learned this shit, I probably could have been an accountant. Dude, if we would have been taught differently, we probably wouldn't have looked at math as such a like. Well, you know, our thing our, the, for so long, the way they taught us was fucking antiquated man yeah you know, that's why we're like so below everywhere else in the world in terms of education most yeah. times um we ha- we do have some brilliant people out there just mm-hmm. you know takes them longer to get to it uh before we go any further Back here with Be Real TV, High Rise Party. I'm here with my man Micah. What Back up? Yes. On Be Real TV once again. Repeat, a, repeat, repeat attendee. Yeah. Thanks for um, having me back. Like I told Adam, you guys had a dope set. And Thank you. Uh, Cali vibes, man. I wanted to say that to you. Appreciate it. And uh, it was great having you up. And you were talking about the collab then. Yeah. And th- this is what you're here at Hall of Flowers for. Yeah, we're here at Hall of Flowers. Right? We're just hitting the hitting the, the asphalt you know and just trying to get involved and like you know we're not just trying to like put our name on something and then forget about it it's like we're we're trying to really network and make connections yeah. and push it and yeah so it's good to be here yeah word up how, how big was your goodie bag today walking around like i know when they saw y'all it was two goodie bags two yeah. goodie bags <laughs> full huh you know what i used to do like come into these events is i would bring a backpack because yeah. i knew even if i came in empty-handed yeah people were going to be handing me shit. So sure. to not have all these awkward bags, I would yeah. just get the backpack stuff yeah. in. Got to do that. Veteran next. move. Veteran move, yes. for sure. <laughs> um, has, have you come across anything that impressed you so far? Definitely. Uh, we we visited a lot of good booths. We I think Adam mentioned the packs and the uh, AJ's flower was really nice. The Delighted was really good. Um, yeah, we, we kind of just did a big lap. There was some. There's like too many to to name. The yeah. the gelato display was crazy with the uh, the hot box and like the the ice cream. So it was just, it's a pretty cool immersive experience that they got going on here, you know. And I think today was a good day to kind of really get FaceTime with some people and just have conversations. I know tomorrow is probably going to be a little bit crazier. So oh, yeah. So it was cool to just come in for a few hours and and see what's going on, you know. So you're gonna be here all three days promoting the the collab. Today's the only day we're here, um, but the company is. Yeah, Autumn Brands will be here. We're we we got a flight to St. Pete for Reggae Rise Up in, in a couple of days, so we're back to the music. But it's good to be here on the first day and just and see people say what up and you know just make those connections and like you said push it and and kind of be be present for the whole thing you know so was this your first hall of flowers or have you been to the ones this is my first hall of flowers yeah really yeah i've been to like the uh cannabis cups and that kind of stuff all right but yeah first hall of flowers so and uh riding kind of in our backyard here in southern california a little bit so it's nice yeah pretty dope yeah man i I think uh what they're doing is great and allowing a lot of these uh you know brands to promote and market themselves yeah. to the culture here for sure that's uh and the fact that they brought it to ventura yeah. county like i was telling adam i thought that was great because there's stoner culture all over california yeah but sometimes these events are you know isolated to a certain city right yeah. and folks from out here don't necessarily get way out there to san bernardino or riverside or whatever maybe la they go to but yeah um it's great that they're they're posting the flag in all these different places definitely i think it's it's inspiring to see so many people hustling so hard too you know it's like you got so many people that are really killing it and it's it's great to see and it's like a, it's just an inspiration for us to like get it get involved and and uh make those connections you know so what do you feel the hardest part of coming into the cannabis industry is or or has been for you i mean 
probably just the fact that it, it is pretty like oversaturated. I mean, let's, we're not going to lie about that, right? Absolutely. There's a lot of dope people like, out there. There's a lot of dope it's like products, music so. right now. Yeah, exactly. And and I think having that experience in music and knowing like what it takes to set yourself apart and, and what that really means is just being true to yourself. And if you do that and kind of just make your own lane, like you can do it in any industry. So it's, it's, I find similarities in music, but it's definitely, you know, it's just a whole different ball game. You yeah, know, it's, absolutely. it's, different network it's a lot of different things but there's a lot of crossover between hip-hop reggae and cannabis so i feel like you know aside from consuming it yeah what's your favorite part of of the cannabis industry or or culture i really think it is that it's not competitive you know it, it's it's more communal like people are kind of trying to bring each other up you know which right. i do see in music too um it's it's people vibing with each other and just like saying hey like you know, let's talk about together. each other's yeah. brands and network. Like, yeah, like bigging each other up. And I think that's collaboration. Crucial. Collaboration. It's the same thing with the music. I think that that's what drew us into it. Um, just feeling like we're welcome, you know, like we're not OGs that have grown and done all this for all these years, but we have friends that were doing that for all these years and and they brought us along too, you know. So it's like we're we've been doing the music, but we've been kind of right alongside it, you know, a long time. And the inspiration that we've drawn from cannabis as musicians is you know you can't even put a price on that or put a quantity on that you know it's like that's just kind of it's ingrained in the culture of music too you yeah know? so absolutely yeah are you guys in uh creative mode writing or are you guys doing shows still we're 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 wrapping up a good batch of like 20 or, or so new songs so we're like we're still got the foot on the gas with the creative mode but it is starting to creep into festival season so if thankfully we have a decent crop of stuff to kind of like get into mix mode and like we can right. set it aside and we can get back to playing live shows and start to mix those into the set you know this year so but yeah we got we're excited about some collaborations we have we've i think our next release is going to be pretty collab heavy which is exciting because a lot of the last past few albums we've done we, we will have maybe one or two guest features you know but i think we kind of made a concerted effort to just kind of like throw some more stuff out there and see what kind of crossovers we can do uh, what kind of different people we can work with so yeah. challenging yourself thinking out of the box and yeah, whatnot exactly yeah. well hey man i want i can't wait to hear what you guys do next Same. and uh man much success Appreciate to the you, collaboration bro. yeah and uh keep making that music and thank you, you too, very bro. much for sitting you in too. you're a big inspiration for everybody but for me especially like seeing you even just here tonight you're always out here like pushing and meeting and like bringing people up and appreciate it, man. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Word up. We'll be back with more after this. Yeah. Guys, did you know today is the legendary Grandmaster Cass's birthday? Oh, yeah. Shout out to him. Yeah, yeah. Born in 1961. Um, my man wrote uh, Big Bank Hank's verse, right? For, for the Sugar Hill songs. Absolutely, OG. Yes. Yeah, he even, didn't he even keep the line of Grandmaster Kaz in there? I believe so. Yeah, I believe that he kept it in. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Listen to the song. So when you think about it, dog, like his, his bars were some of the first that people outside of New York heard as rap music. Absolutely. Obviously, there was rap music going, hip hop music going on before the Sugar Hill gang. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they were the first to hit the lick of licks, Man. right? Man, I mean, that song was everywhere and, and still is everywhere. And his and his lyrics are on that song, man. 100. And that's, you know, like you said, that's people, a lot of people's first introduction to rap. And people hear it now, it's like at, for sure at weddings, birthday parties, whatever. Like, that is the song known it's as... It's a go-to now. The go-to as a celebratory song. Like, <laughs> oh, if you throw on Rapper's Delight, everyone goes, ah! You know, and then mm -hmm. they'll dance all 15 minutes to it. Yeah, that's like, or they'll do like some stupid ass dance, like with the surprise dance with the wedding. Yeah. Yeah, with the couples <laughs> all dancing. I always thought that shit was corny, bro. <laughs> I was like, yeah, like sometimes some of them is cool, but I'm like, man, I was, some of that shit's really. Like, I'm yeah. just like, it's cool with a quinceanera. Bro. You ain't wrong. We're 15, bro. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> bro. Like, you know what I mean? We're 15, bro. We yeah. danced to the Grease intro or whatever. But like, <laughs> yeah, but like, it's this the word. Yeah, like, I'm not fucking doing that shit, but, you know, in front of everybody while I'm getting married. You know that? <laughs> uh, oh, my God. <laughs> That's amazing. Did you know? Today is also Fredro star of Onyx's birthday. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to my bro, the G. The G. 
1971 on this day. Those ones got faded last time. They did. We definitely got them faded. My man, Fredro. Hey, <laughs> be, sometimes my dude be saying some crazy shit. He was, uh, I think, on, on Vlad TV or what? Oh, no, it wasn't Vlad TV. It was some interview. <laughs> it's on Michael Jordan. Shaved his head because of us. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, for real? I was like, for real? He wasn't wow. for real. He was joking around, but it was hilarious. It was hilarious. Because the way he said it, you thought he was serious. I really did. <laughs> and I was kind of hoping. I was like, I really hope he believes this because oh, I am man. never going to tell him to. I'm be like, yeah, you know what? He did, bro. He did that. He did <laughs> that. Be, he did Dude, that. Yo, for real. Have you seen that Michael Jordan documentary? Yes. Uh, the one where, like, they go the, whole, the, the uh, detail into like his dad's murder and shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw that. That one. was a tough time for dude. Yeah. That was, that's a crazy like the breakdown. Whoever did that documentary, that was a good one. Yeah, it was good. Did you know? Mark Tremonti from Creed was born on this day. Happy birthday, Mark. Kids. What are you, are you gonna do anything celebratory for him, Bolton? Oh, yeah, I'm going to be listening to this album all day. He's going to be lighting a candle, <laughs> singing songs, praying, Dude. praising Jesus. The Creed Greatest Hits album. Oh, you man. take me higher. Can you take me higher? <laughs> it's Christian Eddie Vedder. <laughs> He's probably a cool guy. It's just Scott Stapps, bro. We hey, do you just nothing wrong with being down with G.O.D., bro? No, oh, there's nothing wrong with that at no, all. Man. Did you know, on this day, Shirley Holloman from Wham! was born. Yeah, good. Shirley. She was a part of Wham! She was. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wham! wasn't just the two guys. I mean, it was, but they had two... The, the they had two photo. chicks. Yeah, two, two ladies singing background. Backup singles. Oh, they weren't like their chicks. No, but they had a, like a role. They weren't the front face of Wham. They were the back face of Wham. There you go. Mm. There you go. Whoa. Did you know? <laughs> On this day in 1985, Wham! was the first Western pop group to release an album in China. For real. Dude, man. You Look at the hair. Dude. I mean, I'm yeah, jealous. Yeah, the quaff is on point. Dude, I would get hair like that just for one week, even if I had to glue it on, just to like pull off that look, take so many pictures and record content. Now. Giorgio had <laughs> hair, bro, but Andrew had hair. Dude. And people forget how censored like it really used to be for like China you used to like not yeah. allow any Western music inside. Well, if, if, there, if there was any yep. politics inside the music at all and, yeah. and certain things like, you know, obviously drug mention of any drugs or anything like that. Hell no. Gets no run. But nope. you've never been there? No. Casual pictures at the Great Wall. We talk about yeah, that. like what the <laughs> hell, bro? Like, dude, like, look at that. That could have been an album cover for them, <laughs> right there. Dude, you put your foot on top of the wall. Like they usually, they have signs now. They tell you not to do that. That's He's bad. George Michael though, and that's Andrew. Well, that's George. Yes, that's George Michael oh, right there. Oh, dude, oh, this he, could what, this? he could do what the hell he wants. Yep. <laughs> dude, he's running it at that point. He was waking up. Waking everybody up before they go, go, son. Do you know anybody that's been to the Great Wall of China? No, no. I mean, it's like one of the ninth wonders in the world. I would, I would definitely like to see it one day. But you know, yeah. China's kind of mean, so you know. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's <communist. laughs> I mean, if you say it, so. I mean, you know, it's that. <laughs> Did you know? On this day in 2000, the legendary Tony Touch dropped the peacemaker his debut solo album Woo. salute papa classic album i gotta send him more propanes yes hey check it out we're gonna be doing um you know one of our um funk box giveaways if you hashtag be real tv uh you know th throughout uh the month and throughout the week and shit like this you know just do that uh, today we're not uh, getting in, getting into any super chats or um, or uh, you know submissions because I'm gonna have to jump on the private jet and head to Boston tonight because apparently Cypress Hill is playing tonight in Boston. All right, Road Runner at the Road Runner. All right, make sure you check us out. I'm here magically. You know what I'm saying <laughs> with my friends. You said we were gonna play a card game or dominoes. Uh, no. Before you left. 
the, you know, we'll figure that out. Yeah. Right now, we're doing this. Um, so make sure if uh, you're in Boston, go buy them tickets and come to the show. We, we legalized it. The tour in the year of the Mamba. Is that where Peter Luger's steakhouse is at? I don't know where Peter Luger's steakhouse is at. Hey, check <laughs> this out. Um, and if you're uh, inquiring about the new merch, if you're um, intrigued about the new merch, go to www.bereal.tv. Check out the members site with community features and exclusive members only content and merch. This is the new Dr. Green Thumb joint. Have at it. Uh, the podcast is also available for listeners everywhere. If you like what we do, leave a review. If you're listening to us on any of the streaming services, now I'm saying leave that review. Quit, quit bullshit. You know, tell us, tell us how you like the show so far. All right. And uh, tomorrow we'll be playing in Brooklyn, in New York. So make sure all y'all in NYC. Go get your tickets to the We Legalized It Tour. All right. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, man. It's a busy, it's a busy time. I'm gonna be going back and forth for a for a few days. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, busy schedule. Busy schedule. And we might even pop some shows off from the road, you know, so you know, check for that. So do you just go to a FOGO at every single one of these places or do you try different things? You know, there was one one year that we did a FOGO run where, like, everywhere we went, if there was a FOGO, we rocked into it. Oh, come on, dude. That's... Swear to God. Wow. Well, I gained so much weight that year, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, thinking back on that. Give me the meat. Best idea. Oh, yeah, like, God. every city we went to, we checked and see, to see if there was a FOGO in there and, you know, went in. And you know, if you're gonna do a if you're gonna that. do a Fogo tour, like you have to at least do weights every morning type. No, you got to do cardio, cardio and kind of weights to make sure that protein goes. Well, yeah, that protein goes yeah. to use. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You want, you know, you want to tone up get and swole. you know get swole. Well, really, you got to have carbs too to get swole, but you got to have a, a certain amount of carbs. You can't have too many. Right, just be, dude. That's an over amount of steak, though. But you gotta, you gotta be working. But that you know, hey, listen. If you're gonna go like have beef, like any like beef protein. If you're not vegetarian or vegan, and you like eat beef, Fogo's one of the best places. And most Brazilian barbecues like that are top rated. They like because if because here's the thing: if you go to a Brazilian barbecue, you don't necessarily have to just eat the beef. There's usually a really dope um, salad bar that has a mm -hmm. bunch of shit. Yeah, I can vouch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so to me, it's one of the better places. But when we went on, the, we went on a run. We were like every place that had one, we went. D.C. There was one. Philly, there was one. Chicago, there was one. New York, there was. There wasn't a Fogo, but there's a place that's just like it. And so we'd hit that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. I think it's called La Fogata or something like that can't remember that sounds That's, good oh it is bro if you can't have fogo this is this other spot <laughs> but i think now in nyc there is a fogo so like you have both now wow bring it you want to have one they have the other son yeah I wanna they're go, both great i want to go back to in new york city to have some like really good italian food yeah oh they got it yeah there. chicago too Ooh. Yes. chicago they got great yes. italian food there there's, food. there's a spot that's like by by where we stay um, damn, I can't remember it, but like we always go to it right down the street from where we normally um, stay. And it's some of the best Italian food down there, man. I feel like the scene in LA has kind of died down a little bit when it comes to fine dining, dining out. Like it's more like a fast based type no, of place. It's, food truck. It's, it's still there. Yeah. It's just, it's expensive. No, I, I mean, I know it's great. I mean, granted, fine dining is always going to be expensive. But, you know, or you're going to have to spend some kind of good change on it. But I'm saying, like, there's not that many, like, um, like it's, it's, not a, it's not a big deal, like, in the, or it's a big part of the culture like it is in New York where it's, like, he said it's, like, if I want to go to, like, eat good Italian food, go to, to there. Like, and <clears throat> I'm sure you could find many places that are high-end at the same time, even though they're small joints. But out here, like, they either have to go extravagant or there's nothing in between. Um, like, in regards to the high-caliber food. Yeah, I mean, it's around. It's just you got to know where it's at. Yeah. 
there's this place off of Topanga that's like a dope Italian spot, but it's a steakhouse. It's a steakhouse, but it has Italian food in there. What is it called? It's uh, something with a D. Dominico's, Demonico's, uh, something like that. It's off of Topanga. Really great Italian food, there, along with their steaks. Off the chain. Is it Delmonico's? Delmonico's. There you go. You been there, Colton, or you just Googled that? No, no he Googled, Googled that. Hell yeah. Theory's fast. <laughs> fast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He fast, man. Excellent. Fucking birria. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually uh, looking back at your guys' tour. It looks like the uh, first five cities you're in, those are legalized states. Yeah, so we're getting stoned. <laughs> and then even on the 20th in New Jersey. Boom! Akon won't have to boof it. <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's going to be one of the sublime <laughs> with Rome's last shows. Yeah, it's so one of their last uh, tours this year. Yeah. Um, yeah, the No Boof Tour. At least the first half. Smooth. The yeah. No Boof Tour. <laughs> Rare, coming to your town. Even Missouri. Yeah. They're legalized. Missouri. Yes, indeed, brah. Can't believe we end in North Carolina. <laughs> And, oh, we're going back to the tabernacle in Atlanta. Let me tell you what. Atlanta is a stoner city, too. Yeah. And they're not legalized, but they got, they, they got some gals there, and it is stoner um, culture down there for sure. I remember in the early 90s, they were doing, uh, you know, certain rallies there for, you know, to legalize and all that shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'd have us come play. I remember we were supposed to play on the black, back of a flatbed um truck you know but like a diesel truck and we did the show from there and like it was a lot of people can't remember what year that was it was it was like probably 93 94 and uh yeah they got a lot of activists advocates um wow you know casual users uh it's strong out there it's just they you know young folks got to get more involved if they want to change that shit and get it legalized down there yep mm -hmm. True that. Yeah. Because you could still get in trouble down there for some weed. You could still. They you carry a gun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's open They, they just got a new law that they could, right? Just this last year or yeah. something like that, that they could carry it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, what is you, it? Concealed carry or open carry? I think carry. it might be. I think it might be open carry. Yeah. I don't think yeah. it's like, no, you don't need a permit for open carry anymore. How about like, that's cool? But like weed is. Yeah. Still <laughs> illegal. You're going straight to jail. And I don't even <laughs> think you need a permit. Yeah, it says uh, Georgia is a permitless carry state, and anyone 21 or older or 18 and older who is active what military oh um, can carry every can carry a gun everywhere. Are you fucking kidding me? Everybody strapped. That means when you go to Atlanta, you better be having a strap on you no matter what, because oh. like any altercation you get into, a cowardly <laughs> motherfucker would just pull first. Dude, before yeah. put these up a lot or of kids have guns or talk especially with the kids just come up and rob your ass real fast dude yeah dude this is a, lot of, a lot of the younger generation Damn. be having guns. i think that's the other reason why they have open carry though so that you know people thinking about robbing someone else hey they got a strap too you got to get got to get beyond that and some cowardly motherfuckers knowing you got a gun too they don't want the smoke all the time. I do know, though, like a lot of businesses, they can kind of like control that. They can have a sign on their door like, we do not allow any open or permitless carry guns or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so it kind of just depends business. on the business. Yeah. Yeah. But when you're walking around the streets, son. Ooh, -wee. I wish we had something like In that. In the man. streets. Well, we, we have a. Well, trust. If, if uh, do we ever get a, you know, Republican governor, they're going to probably try and implement that. Yeah, man. I mean, some people. They ain't I'm not, you know, I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. I'm not any of it. I don't like any of these motherfuckers. I want you to be clear on that. I am on neither side. There'd be some crazy shit on the Ring app. Do anybody have a Ring? Yeah. Mm. yeah are you, are, is it linked to you, or does your wife have it? Wife has it. I used to have it too. Oh, dude, man, there's so that you get to see what's going on, right? Well, on your block for sure. Yeah. If I'm, you live in the hood and you got a ring cam, you see a oh, shit going man, down dude, every night. Like, I'm over here. I but was then like, you're what? putting yourself at risk because if anyone from the neighborhood that's doing dirt knows you got one and it caught them doing something, 
Well, I mean, that is, that is true. But at the same time, I was just like, I'm over here calling companies. I was like, how much is a fence? <laughs> like, right, yeah. yeah, bro. Like, cause there'd be some crazy shit going on, bro. People just stealing the most random shit, bro. Like this morning, bro. No, we some, should do is the ring show. Like, we show up it's on someone's ring cam and do a song real quick and then run off. Wow. Like, <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like, I saw this funniest but craziest shit. I was like, man, y'all stealing this lady's bird. This van pulled up, bro, like, in this ring app. And I was like, oh, man. I was like, this it looks like a crazy kidnap van. Some dude runs out. He sees the parrot cage and just grabs a parrot and runs. And I'm like, the lady's just devastated her house because he just stole her parrot. Oh, that's but I was, I'm just like, bro, I was like, cra crimes don't got no specifics, bro. I was like, anything goes these anything days. Anything goes these days, It's man. fucking crazy, man. I was like, not even a lady's parrot is safe. I mean, you should have had it in the backyard, but... I mean, it's the morning, bro. You take your bird out, you know? I was mm. like, you know, people got the right to live. Right. <laughs> You're right. You're right. You're wrong. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, bro. But yeah, for I real. know it's random, but I was just like, bro, what the fuck? This is... What are you going to do with a stolen parrot? Yeah, I mean, that's just kind of just lame. I mean, yeah, bro. Like, I was just like, you know, you're going to post up at the swap meet and sell it. Yeah, stealing someone's parent. That's, that's horrible. That's some lame shit. I like bro. on the uh, ring cam, you can talk back to the thief. Yeah. So, like, through your phone, you can start yelling at him. <laughs> Dude, the only thing you should, yeah. be, you should say is be like, I'm coming to the front with a gun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or if you're not there, you can scare them, scare them away. You know, or, I'm, hey, I'm I got really... your license plate, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that type of thing, or something. But yeah, that's crazy. It's, it's crazy what these cameras are catching. I, I wonder if anyone's turned in any footage to Ring in terms of the thing they did with the. If anybody's got any uh, UFO footage or like paranormal, or yeah, paranormal dude. or alien. Jack Osborne plays all that shit. Yeah, yeah, he he be playing all that stuff because I've been watch, I've watched yeah, all the on, seasons of the show. Yeah, I've seen I've seen it. And yeah, he be, he be playing some crazy shit. Just I'm like, dude, orbs. Just, yeah, it, not, orbs in front of the house. Uh, orbs, there was one time orbs. he showed this uh, little this, being. No, he showed like this uh, an image of a dog running through, and then it dissolved. And it was like, you know, like a ghost of a dog. Like it, like their Whoa. ring camera goes off, but nothing was really there. And it shows an image of a, what looks like a dog. And then it evaporates. But it, it, but it set off the ring cam. Man, wow. It was a trip. Yeah. I've, you had to see it. It's hard to explain. But if you see it, you're like, oh, shit. I've seen one of like, see, but presumes to be. Like a little alien walking down the driveway. Yeah, I seen that one too. Ah, that kind of creeped me out because I'm just like, what the hell is that? It looks, hey, little guy. It looks pretty fucked up. It, yeah, like not, nah, but it looks like very creepy. Where you're just yeah. like, bro, like you, if you were to see that in real life, you would automatically get like shocked. And, like, yeah, you wouldn't be able to do anything because your your brain wouldn't know how to process. People would run from that, and then others would go try and get their gun. To, to Kill shoot it. it! Kill it! What is it? What is this? Kill it! The government will come to study it. Oof. Capture it. Not just that. You'd be getting frequent visits, bro. Like, if, you, if you're like, hey, man, you can't talk about it. The government finds out about you encountered something that's not, like, of, of this world. Well, that's too many yeah. people now. It used to be like that. But if you know some shit, if you used to work for the government and you know some of the stuff, and then you go out there and start talking, those are the ones that they're, like, trying to silence now. Not like your average person, because there's too many stories to try to debunk now right back in the day it was like isolated you know they didn't have to yeah. deal with so many one person might have seen it and they're like okay we're dealing with that but like these days <coughs> got so many people reporting this shit you cannot touch everybody but what you can do is if somebody used to work in one of the areas or work for the government those are the guys you're trying to debunk. Yeah. Would you interview uh, ex? Uh, Hell yeah, I would. Ex a UFO worker. I would ask them questions. Hell yeah, we should look for one of those people. Well, I I know a couple people. It's just them what? having the time to come through. Oh. Dude, they don't have to smoke. We just want to hear the. Well, that uh, it's no. not about yeah. the smoking. <laughs> it's about scheduling. Yeah, bro. Oh. Not afraid. Yeah, I'm working on it, son. I'm working on it. You're friends with that Blink One Eighty Tom, right? Well, I, I don't know if we're friends. We know each other, and we've done shows together, but I don't know if 
he considers me a friend because like we ain't never hung yeah. out. We know each other. We're yeah, you know, like that. Yeah, I, we're friendly. Yeah, but I can't really say he's my friend. Like C minus is my friend, and Demrick's my friend. You're my Eho, and you know all that. No, I yeah. can't say that. So like, I don't have an inside line to him like that. But there's other people I know that do work with him that I do have an inside line to that I'm trying to get them to come over here when they're in Southern California. Specific people that are really knowledgeable of the shit. Yeah. So we'll right. see what happens. Yeah. Working on it. That fool talked about aliens when you were on tour, Chris? Uh, not a lot. When, when I was on tour with them, they were really, they, I mean, they were talking about just the set at the, at the time, but there was also... Some of the arguments that were happening right before. Oh, they you broke were in up. that yeah. place where they were fighting. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was there. I was on that whole run in Europe where it was like Tom on one side and then Mark and Travis on the other. They're going through their Eagles phase. Yeah, we like when we were on tour with them because we did a, a specific arena tour with that with Blink, uh, where we were playing support, and they were cool with us, no doubt. You know what I mean? Travis um, was obviously cool with us. Mm. Uh, Mark was the one we saw mostly. He would come through and say, what's up? Yeah, he's cool. And, uh, you know, make sure we were cool. But we'd rarely see any of them together, and we didn't really hang out, hang out. Um, so we didn't really meet homie uh, and, and have any conversations with him, you know, that much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, it, but it was a cool tour. I mean, the Blink fans were awesome you know to us and you know they rocked with us and our fans were cool it wasn't like the offspring tour where it was like a little weird um but uh yeah man salute to blink 182 yeah they're dope and one day i hope to get homie on the show yeah that yeah. would be sick next time i see him i'm gonna bring it up next I time you see it you gotta bring it up dog. yeah man i remember like back in those days i, w I, w I remember smoking blunts with tom though that was fun yeah, awesome. I hit him up, but he just he hadn't hit me back, and it's DM. So like he probably gets a thousand yeah, DMs. Sometimes you might not never see those. That shit is, yeah, like if you don't ever check them, yeah. and then you decide one day after six months to check them, you ain't seeing none of that shit because it's all the way at the bottom. You got to start like deleting, deleting, and then finding. Oh shit! So and so reached out to me. Um, yeah. So I I don't have a direct number to like reach out to him at, but I, I'm gonna try and. Get some of these folks up in here. That'd be great. Yes, indeed. Um, I was gonna say I see this uh warp tour ninety nine flyer. Yeah, dude, I remember going <laughs> oh, to the mall. So yeah, and just like I wanted to go into the van store just because I saw that sign in the front. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that wasn't the tour, but um, that was a show. That was a show we played with them. Cause I don't think we were ever on the tour. Yeah, tour. Molotov was there. This is a there. compilation. This is a this is an album, right? Yeah, I think so. No, I think this is a flyer, right? No, it's a it's. Now the 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 tour we went on was was Blink's tour. It wasn't the the Warp tour. This is just a, a like a thing we I think we played with them, or maybe this is a soundtrack to the Warp tour. Oh, is Warp tour still around? I think they're trying to bring it back. A lot of those, uh, what is that? Is Ozfest still around? No, no, damn. You know, it's crazy. Oz, I saw a video of Ozzy still performing, like, like maybe like I don't know, like a month ago. And I'm just like, dude, this guy is just maybe it was old footage. Nah, and bro, I don't know. I think it's it, it look him pretty fucking old. <laughs> I think he can still, you think he can still rock a show? Oh, he can. I think if he's he's in shape and he's ready for it, he's been taking care of himself, maybe. But if he's let himself go, probably not. When's the last time you talked to Ozzy? I don't know if I've ever talked to Ozzy. What? No, I've been around Ozzy, and I've said, man, I love you. That And that's about the extent of yeah. the conversation. Right. Uh, I mean, I never, like, the way I have a relationship with Cheech and Chung, I don't have it with Ozzy. Like so you say you're more cool with Jack than Ozzy? Yeah, I've I've had more interactions with Jack. I mean, Jack, right. used, to, Jack used to hang out with us, you know, at a very young age, I might add. He was hanging out with us at the Rainbow and at other places, you know, so we have a relationship with Jack. And Kelly used to hang out with us as well now and then, not as much as Jack. 
So, you know, they know me and, and all that stuff. I've had more conversations with Sharon. You know, Sharon was really cool with us and, like, was down with Cypress Hill somehow. I don't know. Maybe it's because, you know, we took Jack in and, and he hung out with us. And so she was like, okay, as long as they're not corrupting our boy. But, like, how do we corrupt Ozzy Osbourne's son? You know what I mean? Right. How, how do, you, how do <laughs> we that do that? That's, I mean, that's... <laughs> you're born into it. Wow. Right? Yeah. We, should, <laughs> we should have... You, well, you should invite... A, uh, what is it? A Jack back? Yeah. With that machine he has? I told him. I, I was so, uh, also going to hit up uh, Susan. Remember, we had Susan here. I wasn't sure I was here that day, but... Oh, yeah. She's on uh, She's on the show um, Paranormal Caught on Camera. I saw she's, the show, though. She's one of the... the people that uh you know she's a witch i guess you would yeah. call it and a spiritualist and she also does the the commentary on some of the things that you see on the paranormal footage that like, they they, get. like some of them just i want to see what's up with this fool right here dog like the fool or the fools they kick it here because there's more than one now you think there's more than one here hell yeah guaranteed I think so yeah really there's there's there's, there's certain energies that do certain things and that that there was only just one at that point and like now bro i want to say there's like three no i don't think there's mm -hmm. three i think there's two like three maybe two that kick it and one that comes visit bro that'll just like random shit wow and you're just like bro like you just feel shit randomly bro that's wild it ain't necessarily like that but i could it could be it could be three i mean but, it could be you know it could be people we know that's that's what I'm thinking. Or yeah. just like, all right, bro, these fools knew that this is a kick it spot. Maybe they're just like They were here once upon a time. Yeah, bro. They're just kicking yeah. it here. With the old man. Wild. It's wild. You know what I'm saying? But it would be cool to see what the thing says. Be like, yo, who the fuck is in here? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, fuck you. Is everybody <laughs> in here? Uh we want to thank everybody for getting down with us. We know this these uh some of these shows are gonna be shortened up because I gotta go get on a plane and shit. <laughs> So um, we thank you for spending your time with us. It'll go back to normal, I promise. You know what I'm saying? Um, so if you super chatted and we didn't get to it, we apologize for that. We'll make it up to you. And once again, um, in the shows to come, hashtag that be real TV, and you might win one of our bunk boxes that's loaded up with some cool shit, all right? Uh, much love to all y'all. Um, B minus. Uh, shout out to everyone here at the table. B, Demrick, E-Zone. Shout out to the Treehouse crew. Dom, Ray, Bolton. Shout out to Aton. Shout out to Dro. Shout out to Kenji. Shout out to uh, Psycho Leezy. Shout out to uh, uh, Silos. And shout out to you for watching us here. You can follow me at C-Fan4 on all social medias. And I love you, Mom. And I love my son. And I hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. What up, Bolton? Shout out to the Insane Asylum. Thank you guys so much. Shout out to Ray Morning Shot Films. Shout out to the Dominator. And uh, what's up, Demerick? Uh, just shout out to everybody watching. Shout out to everybody at the table and a part of this, you know. It's, uh, I enjoy it every time. Yay. Hey. <clears throat> Salute to everybody that tuned in. Go to flavorsbyezone.com. There's a lot of new drops that I've been putting on the website, including some of the stuff that I got inspiration in from Japan. So uh, there's a Japan drop that is on the website. With numerous stuff so go to flavors by ezone.com and join the newsletter to keep updated and get a discount trust me just put your email out there and then we'll take care of the rest and join the we don't smoke the same podcast patreon we have a once a month event exclusively just for people on patreon so it's worth it for five bucks love is within you swallow that